Hi guys, Tiffany here with a wig styling tutorial for my Kane cosplay from the game Near Replicant. And for this wig tutorial, we're going to be using the Thea Silvery Grey Wig from Epic Cosplay Wigs. I will also recommend that you should get some longer wefts, just so you don't have to make your own like I do, but we'll get into that later. Once I received my base wig from the mail, I then unpackaged it and put it on my wig head and then brushed it out. And here's what the front and back looks like. I next sectioned the hair into two parts. The very back hair that's going to go into the ponytail and then all of the hair that's going to be in the front that is going to be for the bangs and the hair that hangs down. I then decided where I wanted the split to be on the scalp. For this base wig, the split is in the very center, so we're going to have to change it so that way it'll want to lay in one direction. And to do this, we're going to be using a straightener with the heat at the very lowest setting. This way we will not melt any of the hair. You will want to do this in very small sections at a time, at the very base of the scalp. Pulling the straightener up and down at the very base of the scalp and then pulling it to the direction that you want the hair to lay and holding it until it cools. I repeated the same process until I had all the hair in the same direction that I want for the split of my hair. I then proceeded to section off all of the front hair into five sections. Two for the smaller, shorter bangs and three for the long bangs on the sides. Now to start the base of our ponytail, which will later on turn into our braid. To do this, I first started off by sectioning hair down the very center this time. And about three inches from the base of the wig indicated where I wanted all of the ponytail to go to a center point. I did this by grabbing a very small section of hair and tying it off with a small black rubber band. Next, I grabbed my hot glue gun and applied hot glue around this rubber band part. This is gonna hold all of your hair in one section and not move. And once all the hot glue had cooled and fully dried, I then grabbed some scissors and cut off the extra hair from the rubber band. Side note, if you don't purchase any extra wefts for making this wig, you will want to save every piece of hair that you trim off because you're going to be using it later. Now that we have our center in place, it's time to start pulling all of our hair to that one spot. To do this, I'm slowly going to work back and forth from left to right of the center point, grabbing a small section of hair, pulling it to the other side, applying got to be hairspray to that section of hair, then clipping it in place and applying hot glue to the section that goes on top of the black rubber band. And to help speed up all of the drying time for the hot glue as well as the hairspray, I ended up using a blow dryer. And you will be wanting to use the hair dryer in the cold setting, so that way you are not reheating up all of your pieces. And then when all of it is dry, you can go back with scissors and cut off the extra hair that is past the black rubber band. Again, saving the extra hair. I then proceeded to repeat the same process for a good portion of the wig. And this process took a wee bit of time, so I recommend putting on a good show to watch in the background. And for moving away from the center point, you're going to be wanting to stay closer towards the bottom of the wig, pulling the longer strands across. And for this, I started gluing my hair on the edges of the wig rather than in the center, so that way they would be hidden from our side hairs. Remembering to crisscross back and forth from the left and the right, so that way you're slowly making layers and covering up so you don't see any of the wefts underneath.
And here's what the wig should look like at the halfway point for the back ponytail. At this point, your center black rubber band should be fully covered, but you'll still be able to fill where it is, as well as there'll be a slight little bump at that section to indicate where to put your ponytail later on. From this point onward, we're going to still end up laying our hair in the very center, but we are no longer going to be cutting the extra hair. So repeating the same process of gluing in the very center with hot glue, spraying hairspray so the hair will lay in place, using a clip to hold it in place while it dries, as well as using a hair dryer on the cold setting to help it dry faster. And we'll be using all of the hair going towards the very top this time, leaving the hair at the neck for last. And once all of the hair at the top is done, we can now do the neck hair. Now this type of wig is not a ponytail wig, and this means that the wig was not intended for the hair to be put up in a ponytail, but rather it was meant to just be straight hung down. And for getting around this, we had previously laid our hair crisscross around, gluing it towards the base, but leaving all of the neck hair alone. This is going to help for the actual base of the wig that all of the hair wefts are attached to, to lay flat on your neck rather than to curl upwards. And for attaching this part, we ended up doing a little bit of hot glue underneath the ponytail and then pulling the hair so it was somewhat loose towards the bottom and then holding it in place with our comb while the hot glue dried. Then once you have a bit of it glued, you can end up clipping it, adding some more hairspray, as well as using the hair dryer, and this will help it ensure that it holds in place. I also at this time ended up adding another black rubber band to hold all of the hair as we slowly start to pull it all to the center ponytail. And here's what the back ponytail should look like once it's done. And we'll come back to the braid in just a bit. But for now, to the front part of the wig to do the bangs. For this, we're gonna start off on the shorter bangs, unclipping them and brushing them with a cone to make sure there are no tangles. And then I got some hair clippers and used them to trim the first part of the bangs but my clippers are a little old and don't really work too well, so I ended up just getting scissors in the end and cutting them where I wanted them. A little helpful trick with wig styling, I recommend drawing on your wig head where your actual features of your face are, so that way you have a clearer indication of where the wig would actually sit, and so when you're cutting it, you know where the bangs are gonna align to your eyeballs. A reminder that foam heads may have a face on them, but the face and the alignments of where the eyes, the nose, and the mouth are may not be the actual placement of your own facial features. Now that our bangs are cut, they were very, very heavy and thick, so I wanted to thin them out. And to do this, I ended up using some thinning shears, cutting away more than halfway up the bangs, slowly reducing the amount of hair that is towards the eyeball. And I ended up cutting about half of the thickness off towards the bottom part of the bangs. And for me, I wanted the bangs to be pretty stiff and not really move around. So to do this, I applied a heavy amount of our got to be hairspray and then used a blow dryer again on cold and going from the top, blowing the hair downward and holding and smoothing the hair as I go with my fingers until it ended up being pretty much a solid rock. Now for the longer side bangs. For these, I combed them and clipped them in place and then applied a lot of hairspray to them. And then slowly shortened them to the length that I wanted with scissors and applying hairspray to hold them at a point. These pieces I didn't want to be solid, so they are a little bit more loose, but that's intentional so that way in the wind they do still have a little bit of a natural flow to them in the breeze. And then I repeated this for the other long bang. For the short bangs on the left side, 
I grabbed all of the hair in my left hand, pulled it so it was somewhat flat, and then slowly went with scissors at the bottom, cutting away so that way it would slowly cut in a natural direction to frame the face. I then went in with some thinning shears to thin out the hair, as well as clipped it in place and applied some more hairspray. And for the last long bang, I brushed it so it would lay flat and then slowly snipped at the bottom so that way it was the length that I wanted. And then again, used thinning shears to thin out the bottom, hairspray in place, and used a blow dryer to lock it. Now for the braid part of the wig. For this, we're gonna be using a floral stem wire so that way we can maintain our circle shape of the braid. And starting at our ponytail black rubber band, I bent the wire into a circle shape and then trimmed off the extra bit with a wire cutter. Now that we have the length of the wire, I then pulled it flat and then got a white ribbon so that way it would match our hair color and then measured that and cut it to the same length of the wire. This is gonna be what we're going to use to make our own wefts. If you bought extra wefts, then you do not need to do these next few steps. And unfortunately, I had my blinds open, so this is really hard to see. I apologize. But what I did was I taped one of the white strands to the table, and then in small sections at a time, applied hot glue. And while the glue was still hot, attached all of our extra hair to this piece. And once you have all of the hair that you want to be attached to it, you then will apply hot glue on top of all of the hair and wait for it to cool. There may be a few spots that the hair is not actually attached to the ribbon, so you will want to apply more hot glue in between the ribbon and the hair to fully attach the two pieces together. And once that's done, then you can trim off all of the extra hair on the top part with scissors. And congratulations, you made your own weft. Now to the next part. Next, I retaped the piece to the table and then used some hot glue to attach our floral wire to it. And when that was dry, attached a second makeshift weft onto the top of the wire, this time with the hair facing the opposite direction. Next, I grabbed this really funny critter looking thing and then slowly started to bend it into the circle shape that I wanted. And with more of our extra scraps of hair, started at the bottom part and laid all of the hair in one direction going downward. You will slowly be layering the hair as you go upwards towards the top of your hair spiral and covering all of your white ribbon. Once you're done with that side, you're going to want to do it on the opposite side as well. Now that all of our hair is attached to the wire, I then applied hot glue to the top part of the wire and inserted it in between our rubber bands so all the hair will lay around it. And here's what it looked like so far. Next, I started to do a somewhat of a French braid to the hair spiral. Braiding about two pieces down and then adding some hot glue, holding it in place to dry, and then continuing down more of the spiral. Side note, if you ended up getting wefts for this, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot cleaner. For me, our wig that we got as our base wig, the hair was shorter than I expected, so all of the hair ended up being a little bit more fluffy and we'll have to manage that later on. I then continued to braid, adding more hot glue, having some hairspray, and going halfway around the circle. At this point, I couldn't really braid upside down, so I ended up putting my wig on the table and continued from there. Once I got to the end of the wire, that was where I wanted to end my braid. And to do this, I ended up doing a pretty good dab of hot glue on the top part of our ponytail where the black rubber band was, and then attached the end part of our braid to it, holding it in place until it cooled. And once that was done, I applied some more hot glue around the black rubber band part and wrapped our extra hair around it so it looked more like a natural wrap. And then with the very extra piece of the hair, I ended up applying some hairspray and using a blow dryer to kind of hold it as a point at the end. 
To clean up all of the extra flyaways, I applied some hairspray to the whole braid and then going from the very center of the braid around to back to the start, used a blow dryer on cool so that way all of the hair would lay flat. For any more smaller flyaways, use some scissors to trim. The very last step is going to be attaching our flower. And for this, I ended up going to Hobby Lobby and getting some fake white flowers and cut off one of the larger pieces. I then applied a little dab of hot glue where I wanted it to attach in between our two longer bangs and then inserted the flower and held it in place until the hot glue cooled. And that, guys, is how I styled my wig for my King cosplay from the game Near Replicant. Thank you guys so much for watching this wig styling tutorial, and I hope you liked it, and if so, give me a like for the video, comment on what you liked about it, and then also subscribe to the channel, and I will see you for our next cosplay tutorial. Much love, guys!